Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode. So I'm going to kick off this episode with an oracle card. So it's interesting at the time of this recording, the moon is, or yeah, the moon is in Gemini, is a Gemini full moon, something like that. <laughs> so I am feeling a little bit off recovering from the cold and when it's a full moon, I I just feel different anyway. I didn't sleep last night. I basically just rested in my bed and sun was almost coming up. Like, all right, might as well, uh, you know, start some work. That's what happens sometimes during the full moon. All right. So this card, which I love because it's going to make a lot of sense as we progress in this episode, slow and steady. And it's a snail there. A oh, whoa, half woman, half snail. I love it. And also it's like um, the goddess, one of the symbols for the goddess, which is the spiral. Uh, so it's a lot of goddess energy, slow and steady, wins the race. We know that this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And I know that sounds like a cliche. And it's just like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But it is true. And when we take note of that, it helps us to cope even more <laughs> with the process when we want something to happen, when we want it to happen, right? It it helps with the, the crazy part of being an entrepreneur or going for your dreams, whatever it is. I do want to pull one more card because it's sticking out here. Solitude. Mm-hmm. But was I saying in uh, the previous episode, sometimes it's going to be a journey of one, but also maybe I'll pull one more card at the end. So I'll, I'll put these cards right here, but also we need to be alone with our thoughts. We have to, we need to understand who we are and all that jazz. So before I dive into all that, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's introduce you to the title. <laughs> so frequency shifts and your magic. Uh, so this is in some ways a continuation from the previous episode, um, <clears throat> because we are talking about energy and frequencies and shifting and creating new realities. Uh, however, in the same token, it is a completely different, uh, episode because the last one was more about expansion and how things fall aligned with that. So with frequency, I wanted to talk about this for several reasons. And one of the main ones is because uh, frequency is being thrown around a lot, uh, especially in the social media space. And sometimes it can be misleading. People want to be high vibe. People want to have good energy. But what does that mean? These words are being tossed around. Oh, that's low vibe. That's high vibe. The vibes are off. We're going to get into that. <clears throat> so let's take a breath. <laughs> okay, here we go. And, and, and hold it. And now release. Press it all out. There we go. Whew, shake it off a little bit. All right, so. As I was saying, I'm just looking at my notes over here. So if you're watching me and you wonder why are her eyes going this way and that way, I'm looking at some of my notes. I need to make sure I hit all the points with you. All right. So, <clears throat> you know, we do hear things like the vibes are off. I don't like their vibe. Your vibe attracts your tribe. That was probably the catchphrase of the year for maybe three years in a row in um, probably like the, what, like the mid 2000-ish era or something like that. Um, and now we are hearing a lot of things about what's high vibe, what's low vibe, as I was saying earlier, but what does this really mean? The last thing I want to happen for people who are seeking this education is to think, oh, I'm going to be high vibing. So I'm just going to drink water all day long, or I don't want to hear anything about anything, which really leads to spiritual gaslighting. Okay, there are people who 
capitalize off of certain things. And that's in any industry. So we have to be conscious about this, okay? When you start to notice certain things being said over and over again, that's partially due to the collective raising the bar, the collective, uh, you know, progressing. And some people see that they want to hop on that uh, train and they want to use the catchphrases and they have no intention on helping you. <laughs> okay, that that's not what they're there for. And I want to say that I I don't fault them because there will always be good and bad. And while yes, they do need to be held accountable, there are tons of people like that in every industry, whether it's even at your job. Okay. It doesn't even have to be a particular industry where you're looking for help in a certain place. So <clears throat> that's going to be ever present. We have to do our due diligence in this process. And that doesn't mean that we can't have fun with this and joke around like, oh yeah, his vibes were off. He was a little bit of a weirdo, you know, or I don't know, she was okay. That's, that's fine to just, you know, do a little poking with your friends, you know, talk like that. But when it comes down to personal growth, when it comes down to wanting to expand, wanting to just stop the things that are not adding value to your life, and you're tired of being drained, you're tired of being taken advantage of, you're tired of being unappreciated, you're tired of being disrespected, and the list goes on, this is where it gets serious, okay? So I am going to break down what frequency means, vibration means, and energy means. Now, keep in mind, there are very scientific terms for this. So I do encourage you to continue your studies in this. And I'm just going to present the scientific slash spiritual uh, combo definition, all right, that I'm going to collapse in <laughs> this time frame. But, you know, of course, there's so much more information to cover. All right. So to understand frequency shifts, we need to start with understanding energy. Okay. Because when we shift our frequency, it's really to create a new lifestyle. Okay. When we are looking to attract that lover, job, you know, lose weight, gain weight, whatever it is, we have to have that certain mindset. And then once we start doing things repetitively, it becomes a lifestyle. That's the vibe that we're at. That's the frequency that we are maintaining. So energy, here's how we are energy. Everything is energy and we can, I don't want to say manipulate, but we can utilize energy. We are basically a high voltage battery. <laughs> okay. So, and I talked a little bit about this in the sacred sovereign sorcery program. So uh, if you have not taken that program, you can go to tmariejohnson.com and then go to Tia's boutique and you can get that program. All right. So our organs and tissues are made up of cells. Our cells are made up of molecules. Molecule, molecules are made of atoms. Atoms are made of subatomic particles. Subatomic particles are made of energy. I'm going to say this again. Our organs and tissues are made of cells. Cells are made of molecules. Molecules are made of atoms. Atoms are made of subatomic particles. Subatomic particles are made of energy. This is why energy is of the utmost importance. At the very core, we are energy. Okay, so <clears throat> once you understand your energy, if you're someone, and I'm going to dive a little bit more into this, if you're someone who is just a naturally loving person, that's your energy. 
what you're going to put out there. Now that's your vibe. Okay. So if you're sitting at home, minding your business, your, your energy is just, it's, it's with you, right? Unless you, you want to send that to someone. Okay. It's, it's, it's chilling. When you go out and you interact with someone, you, you're sending out certain vibes, whether you're, you know, you're dress, dressing a certain way. You're like, yeah, I'm feeling sexy. I'm feeling good today. Or you dress down. You're just like, I don't really feel like being bothered. You know, I'm in chill mode. You're sending out certain vibes based off of the energy that you are uh, having at that moment in particular. Now, these vibes, vibrations are waves that oscillate, right? They're going back and forth, back and forth. Once that vibration becomes repetitive, now you're on a certain frequency, okay? The energy from within, what you're putting out there, your vibes, and that vibe will take you to a certain frequency level, all right? So if you want to operate from love and light and goodness and all that, that's something you have to focus on starting from within. This is why, especially with people who are clear sentience and empaths, can pick up on the the wolf in sheep's clothing. And I don't want to really say that example because wolves are such great animals, but you get what I'm saying, right? This is why when we work on ourselves and our spirituality, we get to see people as they are, not as they're trying to present themselves. Even if we can't put our finger on it, we can't explain it. This is why it's important for psychic vampires, emotional vampires, people who want to take advantage of others. And by the way, not all psychic vampires are bad, <laughs> but those who want to take advantage of others, they want you to remain disconnected from yourself. They want you to second guess yourself. They want you to doubt your intuition because the vibes don't lie. Right? So Someone walks in the room and they can have a million dollar smile, look good, smell good, charismatic, but there's something about them. And there have been people who I've seen time and time again, I don't care how good looking they are. And I've said this to my friends, I don't care for him. Yeah, I know he's supposedly good looking and all that and ooh, 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 ooh. And then you found out, well, we found out years later. Yeah, not all that glitters is gold, or however that saying goes. Okay, a horrible, horrible person, right? And, you know, I'm not shaming or faulting anyone who succumbs to that, right? Sometimes we just have to learn, right? If, if this was younger Tia, I would have not still not trust that person kept my distance, but I probably would have been around, right? This is one of the reasons why I tell people I, I can only be around certain people. I remember uh, <clears throat> I tell some of my stories from my partying years. Um, friend, friend of a friend of a friend. This is why I, I tell my students, my clients, once you have your, your core friends on lock, make sure you're still continuing to pay attention to the friends, friends, okay? Because sometimes, and I've experienced this many a times, is your friend is cool, their, their, their friend is okay, but their other friend, because guess what? They don't owe you anything. No one owes us anything but especially a friend of a friend of a friend. And sometimes they can be jealous. You just don't know. And I've been in some situations where <laughs> the cops got called and I got an argument with this woman. And I was like, I might have to. Uh. So it has been a crazy, crazy journey. I'm saying this because at a point in time, my intuition radar was going off. It was just going off the charts. And I knew 
I knew we were going to get kicked out of that place. I knew it. I knew it. And it was a friend of a friend of a friend. And they were, they were, they were all right. They were already talking to. But as the night went on, I was just like, I know, I know, I know it's going down. It's going down. And then what happens? Your body starts to get ready for it, right? So your body is already in that fight or flight. The cops got called, (laughs) right? It's like, all right, <clears throat> bodyguards, uh, not bodyguards, security is a whole mess. So you you have to trust yourself. You have to get back into your body. You have to understand your energy. All right, <clears throat> because it's not just a hashtag. It's not just some, uh, you know, just vibe high. Because guess what? If it was easy and just that simple to vibe high, then everyone would be able to achieve everything they want in a drop of a dime for the most part, with the exception of a few tall orders. You know, that's why I talked about in the last episode about being that alchemist, right? Using the things that are around you and transforming that. Okay, so nothing's wrong with manifesting, but being that alchemist too. So combine that with trusting yourself, your intuition. And I'm, I'm going to get into your magic part too, some of the ways you can work on trusting yourself. So now that we have that breakdown, again, I want you to remember that vibration you put out there, once it's happening over and over and over again, that's your frequency. You're shifting. And it's funny, as I'm looking at this, as I'm looking at the camera here, I see my battery on my phone. It's 77% and the time is 741. So it's a lot of sevens going on and fours had to do with foundation. And then it's funny because it's December 6th when I'm recording this. So I did look at the one, now there's another seven. So it's like seven, 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 four. <laughs> All right, I just had to make that note in case anyone needed to hear those numbers. All right, so. If you want to shift your frequency to create a new life, you have to start with focusing heavily on your energy. So you, so some of the things, three things I want to, well, actually it's, it's actually four questions. I want you to think about because your body is listening to you and you should be talking directly to your body. When I wake up in the morning, I say, thank you, immune system. Thank you, digestive system. Thank you, all the systems. Thank you, eyes. Thank you, um, be everything, right? So I want you to think about, actually, I want to show you this graph. I want to show you this graph before we dive into that. All right, so here's a graph about the different levels of frequency. They're measured in uh, the, the hertz. So you see their enlightenment is high. And of course, there's so much more to be added to this list. Uh, but if you look uh, below or towards the bottom, you'll see shame, guilt, fear. And that vibrates at a very low frequency. So those waves, those vibrational waves are slower, denser. Okay, now this isn't to uh, get confused with, or this isn't to be confused with, say, a desk where we know one of the reasons why we can see it, knock on it, but cannot walk through it is because it vibrates much slower. It's dense okay it doesn't mean that it's bad it just vibrates slower whereas certain beings like archangels vibrate at a much higher frequency so we typically don't see them right we have to work our way up towards seeing them and even so we don't typically see faces (laughs) so with this when you are experiencing love you feel lighter right things are happening faster. This is one of the reasons why when we are in love, we get that feeling in our stomach. We feel light, but in our hearts racing, it's like so many things are going on. You know, we're vibrating so high and so fast. So that's just a a, a quick uh, snippet of frequency. All right. And the the different um, levels. So I am going to 
bring myself back here. Here we go. I'm like, oh, am I going to come back? <laughs> so that's one of the ways we can further understand frequency, the highs, the lows. What does that mean? What does that feel like? Okay. So now going back to the three questions, now that we have that chart and we have an idea of energy, vibrations, and frequency, what fuels you? What fuels you? What fuels your soul? What makes you feel so satisfied, so nourished, so fulfilled? Okay. Is it playing music? Is it drawing? What is that for you? Because remember, we are working with our energy, our inner selves. So we are connecting with ourselves. We are working on what's best for our inner workings. And have a conversation with your body. And your body just may say, um, massage or rest or, you know, ride a bike. Who knows? Okay, it's just time to that embrace that solitude, okay? And just spend some time with yourself and think about what you need or maybe what you need to get back into. All right, next is what are you eating and watching? Now, this does not mean that you have to skip out on eating pizza forever and never, ever, 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 ever drinking beer unless that's something that you need to do. This is why we need to understand our bodies. A long time ago, <laughs> so about a decade ago when I was starting my business, uh, one of the things I would hear repeatedly is in order to be spiritual, really spiritual, you had to no longer eat meat. You should not be drinking. And that just didn't make sense to me. I like meat. I like to drink. You know, and I didn't feel as if anything was being sacrificed. I didn't feel like if I ate meat, I couldn't be connected to spirit. I mean, I was still getting messages and visions. Let's be clear. None of that stopped. <laughs> oh, one moment here. All right. And I'm back. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> That, w- that was a big, big thing. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be per your body type, per what works for you. Okay. Now, this also means that you don't want to go overboard with this, right? You should not be eating certain foods back to back to back to back. All right. It's just not good. Right. So start understanding what you are eating, what you are drinking. You do want to drink more uh, water or, you know, uh, the water that has all the other good nutrients in it, things like that. You do want to eat, you know, greens and, you know, things that, that are just healthier for you. And you may want to take vitamins and things like that. Uh, my brother takes, uh, what does he use? Um, like the black seed oil, something like that. He was telling me oregano, you know, different types of things. So start, uh, paying attention to what you put in your body. Okay. And take note how your body reacts to that. When I went even deeper into my personal growth, I have not been drinking nearly as much. Now I still have occasional drinks. And what, when I'm with, you know, my, my innermost circle, oh, we're, we're knocking off a few bottles of Prosecco. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm still a vodka woman. All right. Uh, but what I'm saying is I'm not the 20 something Tia who's, you know, you know, drinking a lot. And I, I always held my, my alcohol. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm no longer that person. And I have nothing against people who choose to drink like that. That's their prerogative. Also, I can't eat certain foods anymore. I just can't. I used to eat certain cereals and my body rejects it. It doesn't taste the same. I can't do it. And guess what? I'm not missing out on anything. 
<laughs> what I, what am I going to feel sad about the thousand grams of sugar? <laughs> you know, like I'm not losing anything. Okay. So, you know, start to understand what you are eating and drinking because, uh, and just to go even deeper, just, just a little bit. All right. You know, when we look at ourselves or, or look at taking care of ourselves, our inner, inner, um, our, our inner world, if you will, you know, we have to also think about our telomeres and uh, I encourage you to look that up. I learned about telomeres. Oh gosh, 2018, roughly. Uh, and they are part of our aging process. And so I'll leave it at that, but, you know, focusing on the, what you put in your body will help you not only in the short term for feeling good so you can look good and then you know when you look good, you're going to dress good and all these other things, but in the long run. So when you're older, when you're 70, 80, 90, you know, whatever the case may be, you'll have less health issues right? You're going to have some natural wear and tear body issues, but far as, you know, certain things that people have to deal with from, you know, just not eating or taking as good a care of their body as, as they should have, that's not going to apply to you. All right. So, you know, start, start understanding that. But again, that does not mean that you can't partake in some Buffalo wings. All right. You want to watch the Super Bowl and have some wings and pizza is that maybe instead of having five slices of pizza, you'll have three, right? And you'll be that calm in the chaos, as I was talking about in a previous episode, where you won't feel like, oh, I have to drink to, just to, you know, fit in or anything like that. And if people around you are still doing that peer pressure thing, that's not cool. All right. So next, what are you saying to yourself and how are you treating yourself? Remember what I said earlier, talking to yourself, to your body. If you are saying things like, oh, today is just going to be a terrible day. It's raining. Oh my God, traffic is going to be slower. You already set the tone for the day. You already put that out there that it's not going to be good. And so your body is going to do what? Get prepared get buffed up in his own way to make this trek as opposed to, oh, okay, it's rainy. Good. The streets need to be cleaned a little bit or good. We needed that rain or all right, cool. It's raining. Neutralize it. Cool. It's raining. All right. I'll just take my time today. Or maybe I'll stay in. Maybe I'll get some pho, you know, chill, <laughs> right? Shifting your perspective is one of the cornerstones of getting into that frequency to shift your frequency. Because when you're saying things like that, your body is reacting differently. And I wish I can find this video. Uh, I was telling my student this the other day, and it's it's an interview with Dr. Joe Dispenza. And uh, it, the, the interview breaks away and it shows this video of, um, I believe it's your neurons in your brain. And correct me if I'm wrong, send me an email. If, if you can find this video, send it to me, where it shows, uh, I'm just going to use neurons because I think it was neurons. Again, I'm trying to find this video. <laughs> and uh, you see it connecting here to an old pattern. And then once the person started to make different decisions, you see it disconnect and then connect with a new neuron and it created a new reality. It shifted. So if you can shift your perception, start shifting the very things you do day to day in your life, start off with your thought, talking to yourself, setting a tone for your day. That's the vibe that you're putting out there. That's the frequency that you're going to reach and maintain. So when someone does come to you with some BS, I, I, they come into you with some gossip that don't make, mm, mm, mm. what? No, get, get that out of here. No. Now that doesn't mean to not be aware of what's going on in the world, domestically and internationally, 
And it also doesn't mean that you're supposed to know every single thing that's going on. That's impossible. You can't do everything. And that goes along with some, some people purposes too, right. To, to be on the forefront of certain things. What it means is that you are shifting your world. That's it, your world. And then things around you are going to change for you. So if you are saying negative things to yourself, what do you think is going to happen? If you're constantly thinking, oh, I'm not smart enough, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not that, what do you think is going to happen? That's why representation matters in movies and other things because if you're seeing something over and over and over and over again what's going to happen you're going to believe it if someone tells you from the time you're a kid you're not smart you're not talented you're not gifted yeah I I saw that little drawing you did you cut it outside the lines you can't draw a triangle what's going to happen right I read stories about teachers, grade school, high school, who were actually jealous of the student. That's the kicker. Students who would write poetry or they would do something and a teacher would say, oh, this isn't going anywhere. You will believe it, what you tell yourself. Okay? So that goes along with how you treat yourself. So if you are talking to yourself in a very positive, affirming way, and you back that up with actions, you become a juggernaut. (laughs) I mean, I don't know how else to break that down, right? Because when you start telling yourself, I'm beautiful, I'm talented, I'm smart, I'm capable, I got this, what's going to happen? You're going to fulfill that. However that looks or, you know, shows up for you, whether it's working out, whether it's, you know, work, working on your posture, whether it's practicing speech, whatever it is, you're going to start to walk into that. And that's one of the reasons why Enchantress Becoming, my new mastermind, dives into this very thing. All right. And <clears throat> For more information about the Enchantress Mastermind, I'm not going to dive too much into it because I talked about it. I have a whole episode about it. All right. You can go to tmariejohnson.com and Tia's Boutique and you'll see there Enchantress Becoming. And I'll post the link for uh, that course in the description of this episode. So each month we dive into things that will help you to release the old and step into the new you to shift your reality, get you back into your yourself. Okay. Multi-level healing. You're going to have higher level access to me. One-on-one uh, call monthly call boxer access uh, group healing sessions or group sessions. Uh, one is a healing session, one, one group session a month. And so much more video training. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be highly transformative. It's a 90 day journey, a portal to expansion. Okay. And I'm only opening this up for 10 amazing people. All right. And I, uh, let me see what else did I want to say? And I will, I'll I'll end it there. I'll end it there because I can go on and on and on. All right, so now here's where the shift begins. Let's say, for example, you want a core group of genuine friends. All right, a core group of genuine friends. You want to be around people who are open-minded. You're tired of being around the same old, same old. It's not working for you. You know, there's jealousy. There's other things. You need new friends, people who respect you. They hear you, understand you, all that jazz. Let's look at the three questions I asked you, starting with number three. What are you saying to yourself and how are you treating yourself? Are you genuine with yourself and are you your own cheerleader? So if your energy is not that of at least a certain level of confidence, because we're always building our confidence. 
you know, we rise to new levels. So we need new levels of confidence. But if you don't have a certain level of confidence, if you are saying things too uh, bad about yourself in front of other people, they're going to pick up on it. If you give yourself backhanded compliments, if, when people compliment you, you just can't take the compliment, things like that. Not only will people take note of it, people will also, those who have mal intent, will use that against you because they know that you are separated from yourself. If you're not hyping yourself up, that's a problem. Okay? So that's one. You're disconnected from yourself. Two, eating and watching. What are you eating? What are you watching? Are you an emotional eater? I used to be an emotional eater. I used to be a people pleaser. Right? That's not good. That's not good. All right? That, that, that's not doing our bodies any justice. It's not doing ourselves any justice. And one, one thing I, I <laughs> watching TV, I don't have cable. I watch some things, you know, but when people go overboard with that and get obsessed over celebrities lives and just too much TV, just too much bad programming. All of that is living rent free in your mind. You know, I see people getting arguments in the comment section over people who they don't know <laughs> you know it's just you're spending so much time and energy in the wrong place so not only are you disconnected from your thoughts and your body now you're disconnected from your emotions you're worried about other people too much now what fuels you are you doing the things that you like or are you putting everyone before you and being a mart martyr? Right? Doing too much. And I I'm not talking about, you know, the, the parent. I, I, I can already, oh, but I get when you're a parent, I get that. But you also, you have to make time for yourself. I get that. I get it. I get it. However, you still have to make time for yourself. OK, so now you, you don't make time for yourself. You're putting everyone before you all the time too much. Right. This is this is the. The far end of the spectrum, right, where, where we're doing too much. How can you have a genuine group of friends when the vibe that you put out there is. I don't really talk good to myself. I don't believe in myself. I don't have a lot of confidence because I don't have a lot of confidence, my boundaries are also low. So now I'm eating a bunch of junk or I'm emotionally eating or whatever the case may be. And I want to be disconnected from everything all the time. So I'm spending a lot of time online or on, uh, or watching TV and I'm not doing anything that gives me any pleasure. That's your frequency. That is your lifestyle. So you're only going to bring in more people who are going to take advantage of that. But if you start to put yourself first, fueling yourself so you can take care of the people around you, so you can help the people around you, so you can show up for the people around you, you start to eat better, you start to feel better, you start to dress better, your posture gets better, you don't tolerate certain things, guess what? the quality of the people around you get better because you won't tolerate less because you're vibing too high. And the people who want to vibe low, they can't exist where you exist. It don't work like that, okay? And I know sometimes you have to work with people, you know, who are <laughs> unfavorable at times. I'm not talking about that. Some things are out of our control. What I'm talking about is on a consistent basis, No, and they're not your friends anyway. They're your acquaintances, your business, whatever business partner slash friend or whatever it is. They're not your core friends. They're, or they're not your friends <laughs> in some cases at all. So start again, looking inward. This is why I broke this down like this. So that's where your frequency shifts. When you begin to shift, 
your energy shifts, your vibration shifts, your frequency shifts. And as long as you continue to maintain that by constantly working on yourself, you won't fall from that frequency. All that to say, frequency is a process. It's not just a uh, vibe high. No, it's not. It's not. It's not just vibing high. You can vibe high when you have a a a, a cold brew. You know, you're just feeling good. You're like, yeah, you can vibe high when you look good. But is it consistent? Are you committed to that? It's a process. It's multi-layered because in that process, you are going to address your traumas, address the things that uh, are in the shadow. So there'll be shadow work. All right. Don't let some of these people fool you into thinking that you're just going to do a few breathing exercises, you know, and do a couple of more things. And all of a sudden your frequency just through the roof. That's not how that works. Work. You have to put in the work. You have to work on yourself, not hide from yourself, not remain disconnected from yourself. You have to get reconnected with yourself, connected with spirit and understand what you want. Because if you're not putting yourself first and you're not concentrating on how you're taking care of yourself, you can't get to a certain point. And that's with anything. And please know that people are paying attention. Okay. So, you know, your, your, your friend from grade school, who you think is just your buddy, they, they know you don't have boundaries. They're banking on that. Not all, not all people, but some of them are. And if you question that, tell them, no, tell them you can't do something for them. You can't be somewhere. Don't answer the phone. Do some of the things that you haven't been doing and watch their reaction. So now we got that frequency on (laughs) lock. Let's talk about your magic because this is part of what helps that frequency process. And I want to talk in particular about the clears. So I want to talk about just three clears because there's so much more. And I want to encourage you to do independent research as well. Clear sentient, clear cognizant, clairvoyant. And clear means, you know, clear sentient means to clearly feel. Clear cognizant means to clearly know. And clairvoyant means to clearly see. All right. And uh, clairvoyant is in relation to your third eye chakra, clear cognizant, your crown chakra, and clear sentient, your heart chakra. And by extension, the chakras are related to other chakras. So yeah, it goes on and on and on. Earlier, when I mentioned, uh, you know, listening to your intuition, listening to spirit, you know, when it comes to knowing who people are as opposed to who they are portraying themselves to be, your clears will kick in. You just clearly know there's something off about that person. You clearly feel that person is not genuine. You clearly see that. They're full of malarkey, whatever it is. You may got a vision or whatever the case may be. Getting connected with your clears can be done in a multitude of ways. You can uh, do chakra work, chakra cleansing. You can go to a Reiki practitioner. I will be hosting a Reiki group ritual uh, in the second month of Enchantress Becoming. And we do dive a little bit more into Reiki too. So. To understand that means that you are able to navigate this world just that much more better, right? You have your North Star, your compass. And by extension, you'll have your purpose more in line too. Because when you're a clairvoyant, you're going to see these visions. You are going to know certain things that you have to do. You're going to feel it with all your heart that you're going to make this happen. So when you are looking to achieve something, 
You need to be in that frequency, that winning vibe that by all means, we don't want to hurt anyone in the process, okay? But by all means necessary, right? We are going to be locked in. But if you are turning down the volume of your clears, which you can by just not acknowledging it, and then over time, it'll just become stagnant. It's like a, a muscle. It's like a spiritual muscle. You got to you gotta work on it, work on it, work on it. And so some of the things I used to do when I first started out is I would take my Oracle cards, shuffle them, and I would just place my hand over and I try to pick up whatever I can, whether it's something I can see, feel, maybe hear a clear audience. And then I would flip the card over and I would say, oh, there's purple. There's the colors I was picking up. I think it's called remote viewing. I didn't know at the time. I was just practicing. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> things like that. Or uh, I would just hold something in my hand and with people, I would just say, you know, concentrate and, and try to pick up what's in my hand because also it has to do with associations. So let's say in my hand, I had, um, let's say, a rose quartz. And you don't pick up rose quartz, but maybe you pick up your grandmother because maybe her name was Rose. And maybe uh, she would wear a a rose quartz necklace, okay? So we got to think about associations as well because spirit language is symbolic, Okay, it's not Italian, it's not English, it's not, it's symbolic. So we have to understand that. So while we are interacting with people, navigating through this world, you know, shifting our frequencies, we have to understand how spirit interacts with us and how we receive these messages. So if you are someone who, going back to being a clairvoyant, your your visions are always associations of something. Get familiar with that and start developing a catalog in your mind. Oh, okay, when I get that, that's usually in regards to this. Let me see if that still checks out or do I need to add another you know, bullet point under that association? With clear sentient, it's different types of feelings. So for me, I know I'm a clear sentient. And I'm extremely connected to the people who I'm closest with. I don't care where they are in the world. I pick up on certain things and I get different types of feelings in my chest, which is sometimes nice. And other times it's like, oh my God, why? (laughs) Right, it's not a good feeling, but I, I start to catalog these feelings. Oh, when I get that feeling, I know something's off. When I get that feeling, I know that's a heads up. Something's about to go down. Different feelings. When it going back to shifting frequencies, as we are growing and expanding, we need to understand how our magic plays a part in that. So if I want to expand in some area in my life, I know I need to feel that. Because I know as I'm progressing, there are going to be things that pop up that I know I need to get my emotions intact because there's a lot of feeling involved and I can't be distracted. So I need to make sure that my chakras are aligned and cleansed. And it's okay if every now and then it goes a little haywire because life happens. It's about getting back aligned okay everything is in roses and peaches and cream and be nice but that's not the case so that's not to dismiss life it's just that we are better equipped to handle things so practice your clears okay being clear cognizant you don't have to have proof for your personal self every single time all right going back to the example with the person If you know there's something up with someone, why wait to find out what that thing is? Bounce, (laughs) leave, go if you can, right? Don't ignore certain things. And everyone has this. Some people call it different names. Everyone has. Some people say, oh, it's, it's a female's intuition, motherly instinct. 
Well, the motherly instinct is separate. That's different. That's that's a connection. But you get what I'm saying. And so we have to thoroughly understand ourselves so we can understand our gifts and know that it's not someone else's thoughts that have influenced us. It's our own intuition that's giving us a heads up, good or bad. Okay. And again, don't don't uh, get overly concerned about finding out what happened. You dodged a bullet. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. All right. You may find out later anyway, but don't worry about it. So practice your clears. Start learning your own personal magic because you are the magic. Your very essence is magic. As I mentioned earlier, our energy, we are like a high not we are like we are high voltage batteries. We are just tons and tons of powerful energy. Now, imagine what your life would be like if you knew how to harness your own energy and direct it into different places. So you can be the best version of yourself, have the best experiences, be better equipped to handle certain things, dodge other things, okay? Just be ahead of the game. Be more aware, more plugged in. Have things work for you even more. And things come to you easily. Other things you will have to work for, but some things can, there are some short-term things that happen fast. Yeah, of course. Like finding parking really quickly. Like finding that dress quickly. Like, you know, just just these things happening or, you know, money happening quickly, things like that. People noticing you, respecting you more, just like these things are just happening. But it, it all boils down to understanding your energy and who you are. Once you understand who you are, you understand your energy. When you understand your energy, you understand the vibration that you want to put out there. And when you understand the vibration that you put out there, now you know the frequency that you want to be in and stay in. And the magic that is all aligned with that. And when I say magic, I mean the energy that is just swirling about all around us. So it's that that universal energy that we tap into and it's our own personal energy because we are the magic. And then we, we work with the, the magic around us, the energy around us. That's why, as the saying goes, our thoughts create our reality because our thoughts are going to send those waves out there, just like our emotions, our, our heart energy or uh, your energy sending all that out there, which is why we had to be careful with that. Okay. So yeah, sure. Joke. All right. If you want to watch a scary movie and it doesn't impact you, watch it. I love scary movies. For some people, they can watch scary movies as they progress because it just is it's not for them anymore. And that's okay. It's about understanding yourself. Okay. But also I'm dark feminine. So <laughs> it's a little different. I, I like scary movies. Uh, but so yeah, understand your magic, practice it and notice, notice there are no crystals involved, no Oracle cards involved. Okay. No runes, no candles. It's all you, even your clears. It's all within you. You don't need them, but they're they're great to use. They're, they're a good bonus, right? Amplifier, help with clarity. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But your power isn't in the cards. Your power isn't in the crystals. Your power isn't in the runes. Your power isn't in the candles. Your power's in you. And that's how you shift your frequency. <laughs> Okay, and so much more. So that's what I have for you, enchantresses. And know that this work is ongoing. So no matter where you are in your journey, know that you can always go deeper. <laughs> All right, there's always more to learn. And you, you got to give yourself that leeway. All right, and be open minded. And get to know your internal voice, okay? 
So you know that you're not going to be listening to people who don't have your best interests in mind, you know, who are going to try and tell you just five high. (laughs) Oh, goodness gracious. Mm -mm -mm. There's work to be done. All right. You just don't vibe high. You just don't shift a frequency like that. You have to do the work. Okay. And even by chance, if you were able to have an experience where you had a moment where you were just in such a great frequency, you had to maintain it. You had to maintain that. And that maintaining process involves pouring into yourself, nurturing yourself, understanding yourself, learning as much about yourself as you can. So you can get to the point of, I am. Period. All right, sending you so much love and lots of blessings. I am rooting for you as always. Remember to be kind to yourself until next time.